Okay, in this section we're going to talk about rules about counting, and that's how to find how many groups of things can happen. And this will most often help us find the denominator of a probability question. So we're going to start with what's called the fundamental counting rule. So giving two trials, if the first trial can have m outcomes, and the second trial can have n outcomes, then the two trials together can have m times n. So you multiply the number of different outcomes per trial. So like I said, this is very helpful in finding the number of items in your sample space. So we're going to use some examples. So it says, use the fundamental counting rule to find the total number of outcomes for flipping two coins. Well, when you flip the first coin, there are two possibilities, heads or tails. And when you flip the second coin, again, there are two possibilities, heads or tails. So there would be a total of four possibilities for flipping two coins. So next we have rolling two dice. Well, each of rolling a dice has six possibilities. So rolling two, we'd have six times six or 36. The next one says flipping a coin and rolling a die. Well, flipping a coin has two possibilities. Flipping a coin has six. Two times six is 12. So there'd be 12 possibilities. So this would be the same as making a tree diagram and counting how many things you have at the bottom. So this says um, you can extend the fundamental counting rule to more than two trials. So you can do it as many times as you need to. Find the total number of outcomes for randomly guessing the four digit pin number of a friend. So we have four digits here. And if we think of the digits 0 through 9, that's 10 different digits. So we'd have 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, or 10 to the 4th. So we'd see that that's 10,000 possibilities. So randomly guessing it, if you were just guessing one number, you'd have a 1 out of 10,000 chance of getting that pin number correct. So the third part here says, given the newer Ohio car license plates have two letters, followed by three digits, followed by two letters, what's the probability that a random Ohio car has license plate with HC290LB? Well, we know that letters, there are 26 of them. So any place where there's a letter, there's 26 possibilities. And we know that digits, as we talked about above, there are 10. So we're multiplying 26 three times, so this would be the same as 26 cubed, and 10 three times times 10 cubed. going to get a very large number here. So 17 million 560 or five, sorry 576,000 possibilities. And you know whoever was coming up with the license plates would have wanted to make sure that that's enough license plates for how many they need how many cars they need to license in Ohio. So picking one car you'd have a 1 out of 17,576,000 chance of getting that exact car. Now, another thing we're going to see coming up are use um, what's called a factorial. So a factorial uses um, an exclamation point, and it's the product of decreasing positive whole numbers. So if we say 3 factorial, we mean 3 times 2 times 1 which if you do 3 times 2, that's 6, times 1 is still 6. 7 factorial would be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now our calculator will actually do this for us. If we hit 7 and then go math and arrow over to where it says PRB, which stands for probability, and number 4 is, oops, the um, factorial. So 
we hit enter and we see that 7 factorial is 5040. So 5 factorial again would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 or we can also do it by doing 5 math over to PRB number 4 and we'll get 120. So a special case 0 factorial is always just equal to 1. So I know that seems strange, um, but to make formulas work out, that needed to be true. So we talked about it on the calculator that you hit math. Go over to PRB. And then it's number 4. So the factorial rule um, a collection of n different items can be arranged in n factorial different ways. So if you have, say, four items, you can arrange those four things in four factorial ways. So number one says, how many different ways could you go to McDonald's, Taco Bell, and Dairy Queen? So we have three different restaurants here. So how many, how different ways you could go to them would be three factorial. Um, which would be six different ways. So different orderings are also called permutations. Oh, so what they wanted in these blanks. So we could say arranged or this word permuted in three factorial or six different ways. So if you want to take a statistics, English, computer, and science class, how many different ways could you take these four classes? So that would be 4 factorial, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which if you work that out is 24 different permutations. Well, what if you only wanted to take three of these classes? Well, for the first class, you'd have four different classes to pick from. Then there'd only be three classes to pick from and then two, which actually ends up still being 24 permutations. That last class just kind of gets stuck at the end. So if you're picking three of them, it's going to be the same number of ways. Okay, number three here says, how many different four-letter words can you make from the name Walt Disney? So we're just saying if you take those letters, how many ways can you pick four letters and rearrange them? Um, now this is what's called a permutation. So we're going to count the total number of letters. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 10 total. So there are 10 letters and we're permuting 4 of them. So this is known as 10P4. And we can do this on the calculator by putting in the 10 and then by going math over to PRB, choosing PR, and then putting in 4. So 5,040 different permutations. So what is the probability of randomly choosing NEAL? Well, that's just one of the four permutations out of 5,040. So the permutations rule So if we want to select our items without replacement from a group of n different items, the number of sequences or permutations is called NPR. And you get it by taking n factorial over n minus r factorial. And on the calculator, you're going to go math and then go over to PRB and it's number two. You'll put the first number in. So if we want 5P5, the N is five and the R is five. So we do five P5. So we get 120. If we want four P3, We get 24 and 22 P5 
we get 3160080. So just over 3.1 million. So number four says we have 20 students in the class. How many ways can we choose five students to become the president, VP, treasurer, social coordinator, and tutor? So how can we order five students in those ways? So this is going to be 20 students, and we're permuting five of them. So 20P5. So there'd be 1,860,480 ways to do that. So the important thing is that with permutation, the order that you put them in matters. Here we were ranking them president, VP, treasurer. That order mattered. So number five here says a new author would like to set up book signings in a major city in each state, but only has time to visit five states. How many possible routes could she take? So the, how what well order should she go to those five states? So we have five things, and we're permuting all five of them. So 5P5. Five five. Is 120. Now, we could also talk about permutations when you can repeat things. Um, so sometimes the items in your group can repeat, in which case the rule for finding the number of permutations changes a little bit. So if we select all n items without replacement from a group of n items, um, you're going to take n factorial, and then however many times something repeats, you're going to divide by that factorial. So number one here says, how many different ways can we arrange the letters in the word keeper? So we have six letters here, so that's up top. And then the number, the letters that we are repeating, so for example, the E's, we have three E's, so we're going to have three factorial in the bottom. And that's the only thing we have repeating. So we're going to do six factorial divided by three. factorial, which is 120. So that says, how many different ways can we arrange the letters in Mississippi? Well, we have 11 different letters in Mississippi, so we're going to have 11 factorial. Okay, the I's repeat four times, the S's repeat four times, and the P's repeat two times. Now, when you put this in the calculator, when after you hit divide, make sure you put parentheses. And when you put this in your calculator, you'll get 34,650 different ways. Part three says um, a family has five children, three boys and two girls. How many different ways can be that they be born? Well, five is the total number. And we're having three boys. So we can think of repeating three boys and two girls. So again, if you put this in your calculator, you're going to end up getting 10. So in all of these previous examples, the order mattered. Well, in the next video, we're going to talk about what if the order doesn't matter? Would this increase or decrease the total number of possible groups? So when we think about the letters T, E, and A, if we rearrange how many ways we can rearrange the letters, there are three. But when we talk about just combinations, just how many ways can you just pick three letters, there would only be one. We would consider those all the same. So in the next video, we're going to talk about what are called combinations.